Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Joanne.com as we finish our Bernat Baby Bundle Stitch Along and today we're gonna do week number three which is the conclusion and this is only one particular round that we have to do in order to finish off this particular blanket. It's really great and we're almost done and today we're gonna do the conclusion. So here's the final set of instructions and the more information of this video is the link in order for you to access any of these patterns that I am using for this Bernat uh, Baby Bundle Stitch Along. So what we have here is we have in gray, we have the stitch work that is already existing and that is round number 32 and we already have that done but now we're going to do and finish off the final round to do it. But what we have to do is we have to start preparing these chain work in order to happen. So what we're going to do then is that we're going to be able to uh, make our chains and right now we have all these loose chains on the end but now we're gonna be able to put it together and we have to do it a total of five times. So we have to do that first before we continue to do the final round. So let's show you how to do that first. So let's begin doing the twisting in order to get this chain work to go. So now we're gonna create our step laddering effect. So you're gonna go back down to round number one of the middle of it and you have to do this five times. So you're gonna have to do all five levels. So you just pick up the first chain three that is existing on round number one and you're going to twist it. Okay, so you want to twist it so that this string on this side goes over. So you have a complete turn like this. Okay, so let's just look at it again. So pick this up. Okay, and pick it up and turn it. Okay, so turn it. So now you're all you're gonna do is now pick up the next chain that's available to you in behind and feed it through that loop. So now it's just a matter of feeding these chains through loops. So it's gonna be really tight in the very beginning because if you remember it was only chaining three. So now you grab the next one and feed it through that loop. Okay, so this is kind of manual work as you can see here and you're gonna feed it through and you're gonna pull things together. So this what you see here is going to collapse on itself. So you're gonna move then to the next one and feed it through. And all you're just gonna do is kind of yank up on it. It will pull it nice and tight. Don't skip any that you do. And now you can see all those beautiful colors and, and textures that you've been working with are all gonna come through on the chain. When you get all the way to the top you're just going to feed the last ones through including the last one that you've been working on. This is where I'm just gonna put my hook back in so it doesn't drop it and you're going to put that last one through. So now with a spare piece of string what I would recommend you can either use a safety pin if you have it or you can use just a spare piece of string in order for you to, to kind of tie it and hold it into position. So just tie it around two of these and then when you come back to this when you're ready you can just adjust so this prevents this from all falling out. So I'm just gonna tie it a nice little bow tie Nothing tight, it's just a holder and you can use a safety pin too if you want to if you have access to that. So now you're just gonna move around and you're gonna go to the next one that is existing. So rot rotate your afghan or your blanket and then just start down at the bottom again and just start right down in row number one and remember you want to twist it. So give it a twist, same direction as before and then start moving up. So right in the very beginning it's really tight and you need that because it is the center and then once you get beyond the first few then it gets looser for you to be able to work with. Just like that. So you're gonna work all the way up then and do the remaining of these. Make sure you put in your safety pins or your piece of string in order to hold it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue then and we're gonna move around and secure everything into place with the final round that concludes today's blanket. Just as a side tip as I've been coming up and I've been getting all the chains in I turned it around and I have a loop that's outside of here. So what this means to me is that I accidentally skipped that loop as I was trying to go through. So what you're gonna have to do is that you're gonna have to just untang or un un take this out and probably check that before you secure everything in a position and just undo. So just pull it apart until you get to that section. So you can just pull it straight out like this until you get to where that loop is holding out. So it looks like I just skipped it and it was right there. So now I'm gonna turn it back around and then coming in and pulling it up. So just turn it around and make sure that you captured all the loops. I actually missed it on another section and I just saw that I saw it here as well but I corrected that one there and this one I hadn't yet seen until this very moment. So I'm making sure I'm getting everything through so 
it looks still it looks good on this other side um, but I'm checking the back and there's no loops outstanding on the back. So make sure you check that. So here is the look of the middle here. I've done all the ladder work but I have not gone around to secure it all into final position. So you see it's nice and tight. It pulled everything together. You can see the star formation is now happening. So now I'm gonna take you back to the pattern. We're going to go through the last uh, section of this. This is just one more round in order to conclude today's blanket. So here is the pattern and we're gonna do one more round. You can see we're gonna do some pico work but you're also going to secure that final loop that's gonna go around. Here's the thing. Look where that slip stitch is. It's on the wrong side isn't it? So what you have to do and, and it's not on the wrong side uh, by accident. It's on the wrong side on purpose. So when we went to go finish this particular one we, we stopped and we're on this side of the project. So here is the ladder right here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to turn our project around backwards and we're going to then start and we're gonna go up over this first and then across. Okay, so it's not a mistake in a pattern. It's just the way that you're going to do it in order to do the final pass all the way around. So to do the final pass we're going to go some single crochet. So we're gonna turn this final loop just like the way you see it here and then we're going to single crochet and then pico and then uh, single crochet continue to lock it and then you're going to notice is that we are going to put the next three single crochets by itself. We're going to do a pico, three crochets by itself and then a pico and we're gonna continue that all the way to the end just like you see here. So right where we did those chain twos we're going to do a single crochet pico, single crochet pico, single crochet pico all within that space and then we're going to continue again three single crochets, pico, three single crochets and so on. And then once you get back over here it's just like what you did here. Three single crochets, a single crochet pico and three single crochets and that locks that into position when you go to do that. So let's uh, uh, start experiencing this round. So let's turn our project upside down. Okay, so right where we were. So we're look now looking at the wrong side of the project. So you, none of the ladders should be available and, and visible to you. You should only see the back. And so this is uh, just a yarn strand as it changed over. Just for uh, complete disclosure, I am almost done a third ball of yarn. I'm gonna be moving on to a fourth just so you know. So what we want to do is that we want to start off right where we are right now and you have to get that final loop that's going in there. Okay, and so here it is here and I can tell it's also the same color as that is what is attached as well. So what you wanna do is that you wanna twist it just like it shows in the photograph. So just twist. Okay, did you see that? So look where my hook is and I'm coming around. And what we're going to do then is that you're going to single crochet right into that, that same loop. Okay, so it might get really difficult the first time. So let's just try it again. So just make sure this yarn is behind first. So turn it and go right into that loop and I want you to single crochet three times. So one, two and three and then you're going to do a pico. So it's really hard to see on this yarn. So the first stitch is gonna be one single crochet first then a pico. So it's one, two, three and then coming down into the first chain you want to insert it into the first chain. So just insert right into that first chain and pull through and through and that's your pico. pico. So I've just done a single crochet and now I'm gonna chain up three. So one, two and three and now you're gonna come down and you're gonna go into the very first section. See these two strands of string? See how they're kind of doing an arrow? You're just gonna sneak in behind those. So you don't go all the way through the project. You just go through those two and pull through and through and that's a pico. So let me show you again. So let's just continue along. So one, and this is just a pico demonstration but I'm just demonstrating it later on in this project because I'm not on this yarn at this moment. Okay so here we go. So we got three in. So remember it's one, two and three and then see these two strands. They form like an arrow. Just sneak in behind them and pull in and in. And even though you cannot physically see that when you're on this other kind of fuzzy yarn you can actually feel it. And so you'll be able to sneak it in and it will create these little bumps that are on the outsides just like you see. So that's how you do a pico. So now in that same loop you want to single crochet three more times. So one, two and three. So this is now gonna hold this loop for you so that you never have to worry about it. So just manipulating it here you want to move down to the first stitches here. So you're going to then single crochet for the th first three. So one and you got two and three and then a pico. So one, two, 
three, go into the first chain, pull through and through. That's your pico. And now continue then in the next three. So one, two, and three, and then pico. So one, two, three, going into the first one. You can see the yarn just changed. So pull through and through, and now pico then for the next three. And you continue that all the way across. So one, two, and three, and then pico. So one, two, three, first chain, pull through and through, and then continue along. So one, and two, and three. So I want you to continue that all the way across and I'll see you at the first section where it is the chain two right up here and then I'll show you what to do there. So I'm coming up near to the point and you're gonna notice that there's a pico. So one, two, three, and then coming back in, first one. And then there's gonna be two stitches left over here before you get to the, to the chain two space that you've been working with. Okay, and you'll see that in the instructions as well. If you're off by one, I wouldn't worry about it. Just, you know, make it or fake it, right? So I wouldn't frog anything in order if you're not got it right. So now you're just gonna single crochet into the chain two space and then pico. So one, two, three, and then pico. And then single crochet again into that same space and then pico. So one, two, three, and then single crochet finally again into that, that same space and then pico. So one, two, and three and then pico. I'm gonna pico that in. So first one. Remember there's other videos on how to do picos as well on the crochet crowd. So now you're just gonna continue then and just start going down along the side. So the first three are single crochets. So one, two, and three, and then pico. So one, two, three, and then pico it, and then continue to do that same fashion going all the way around. So what I'll do is I'll get there and then I'll just review on how to do these edges again where the ladders are, are on attached, and then I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up now and I'm on the underside of the ladder here. You can see that here and I wanna grab the very last strand. Make sure that you check it and make sure that there's no strands that are misleading here that are not um, in the particular um, ladder. So now you're going to turn this work here. So just straight out and just turn it. Okay, give it a, a twist and then you're going to go right into there. You'll have to hold things into position and you wanna single crochet three times. So one, two, and three. And now you're going to single crochet one more time. So this is the fourth and then pico. So one, two, three and then coming in to the beginning to do your pico and then coming down again on the other side. So one, two, and three. So once you got that done then, you're just going to then jump down and continue. So remember it's three in a row. So one, two, and the yarn's changing for me here. Three, and then you pico. So one, two, three, and then coming into the same one. Okay, so it's one, two, and three, and then pico. Just like that. Okay, so continue that all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of the project here. I'm coming to the final round and I'm just putting everything in the last few stitches in and I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning where it started with. So now everything is in, the ladders are all in. I can go back and now I can trim out my extra yarns that I had in there that I buried as I went. And so it's really just the final touches. I'm going to show you how to be able to um, hide in these loose ends as you go. It is thick yarn so you'll need a darning needle and I'll show you what to do next. So you're gonna need a darning needle for this and then I just want you to pull this yarn so make sure you cut it first and then just pull this yarn through the final loop. Okay, and pull it snug. So now you can just take this yarn here, this is the boucle, and you can just squish it down and then feed it through the eye of a needle. It's amazing how much you can squish that if, when you have to. And so just feed it through. So if you go in the direction from which you just came, 
So just go back through once. Okay, and pull it through. Blue clay is a little tougher to pull through than other yarns. So one. So make sure you don't pull it to the point where it's ruining the tension. And then go back in the other direction for two. Okay, and then go back in the other direction for three. So any loose ends that you may have that you can secure it this way. And now you can safely just cut this right down into the project. And you will never see where you stopped and started on this project unless you're following the yarn around. So now your blanket is completely done and now it's time for you to submit a photo in order for the giveaway if you're participating in the stitch along. So this is the conclusion for the Bernat Baby Bundle Stitch Along and this is an amazing idea. You've learned how to make the center. You've learned how to do the Jacob's Ladder or the step laddering effect as you see. You've learned how to make a star. You've learned how to do picots and now it's time for you to participate with our giveaway and if you're participating in this and you're in the time frame that this video is being uh, <laughs> broadcast you have until March, uh, May 4th of 2017 to submit me a photo. You can see the link for the more information on this video if you would like to participate. So make sure you snap a photo of your afghan done and then send it to me and then we can get you into the giveaway. So on behalf of joanne.com I'm your host Mikey. On behalf of the Crochet Crowd it's been a pleasure to stitch along with you and we'll see you again in the fall of 2017 as we stitch along again with our friends over at Joanne. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.